Ladies and gentlemen, the play is the thing with your host, Judy Sleek, and special guest, Dr. James Dillard. Now here is Judy, Judy, Judy! That was lovely. I have Dr. Dillard with me, who is a specialist with pain. Hi, Mr. I mean, Dr. Dillard, how are you? If I'd have known you were going to wear the sequins, I would have worn rhinestones. I would have, yes. I would have gotten all faputs or something, you know? Well, next time we have to communicate Next better. time we have to yes. get this set up. And you're a pain specialist, and I really have to say this, that I heard one time that pain is relative, and you know how relative us are. <laughs> <laughs> that's, but that's the truth. Uh, today, doctors are not very familiar with pain. I mean, they don't take it seriously, and they don't treat it. So well, that's because doctors get very little training in medical school in, in pain. Uh, what we mostly learn in medical school is about the things that kill you, the big things that kill you. Those are the things that we worry about, heart disease, cancer. Diabetes, right. trauma, you know, yes. that sort of thing. Um, and, and that's reasonable. But what happens is that most doctors don't really learn how pain works. And um, there's sort of an attitude, I think, in medicine and certainly in hospitals. The, the attitude is, well, it's only pain. It's not going to kill you. So, yes. uh, mm -hmm. you know let the nurses take care of it or, you know, just give them a couple pills. Just. Right. But the problem is, Judy, that the result is that according to the National Academy of Sciences, the Institute of Medicine, we have over a hundred million Americans who are suffering with chronic pain. That's more than one in three Americans. Yes. Which is a terrible statistic. One of every four American families is significantly affected by chronic pain. And chronic pain disables more Americans than cancer, heart disease, and diabetes put together. So it's a terrible problem. And most doctors don't know much about it. And frankly, they kind of don't want to treat it. Right. It's sort of a pain to treat. It is, because the only way they would treat it is like with drugs, which is a, a very questionable prescription. Yeah, and, the, and it's today. tough. Using, using the medications is challenging. And we've got, <clears throat> we've got a couple of major things we do in conventional medicine to treat this terrible pain problem. And I brought along some props. This is yes. my official New York State prescribing pad. There are over right. 3,000 things I can write on here by law. Yes. And a lot of these things have bad side effects and adverse reactions, and people are scared by a lot of the things that I can write on here, and they get bad reactions. And most of the people who come to see me are already taking things or they've tried things that haven't worked very well. That's so so I, have to, I have to unwind that problem. Mm -hmm. Now, here's another little prop. Yes. Can everybody see what this is? It's a needle, hypodermic. That's a needle, right. Yes. And a lot of people who have lived with pain have gotten stuck with one of these. Now, I do that too. The problem is a lot of these injection techniques aren't done very well and they're done kind of like a factory. Um, and so those don't work out very well. I have patients come in and they say, yeah, I had the injections. They, they really didn't work or they worked for maybe a couple of days. Well, I do these a little differently from the way most people do. Um, uh, I injected a 92-year-old lady. I injected her knee yesterday. And it was the first relief she'd had in six years. Wow. 
and so she's still doing really well. So you have to know just exactly where to put that needle. That's the trick. And you seem to have a magic touch. Well, I don't know about all that. But I think I had good people who trained me at Columbia University. Right, but that, like you said, not all the doctors are trained for that, but you seem to touch like the neck and then you feel something there. And then that's where you put the needle, you feel it. Now that's, uh, that needs like a special talent, I would say. Well, it does require special training. training. And like I say, most doctors don't get trained in that. Most doctors are very focused on the big bad things that kill you, heart disease, stroke, diabetes, mm -hmm. chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, asthma, you know, those things. And appropriately so, because those are the things that kill people. Pain, eh. You could live with, or yeah, le just learn to live with it. Learn to live with it. Yes. That's it. That's what pa patients hear a lot, is learn yeah. to live with it. Um, yeah. Or they get trials of this pill or that pill. Right. And I would say not all pills work the same for everybody. No. And then we have problems with things like the opioid medications, the, the, the ones that are in the morphine class, yes. Oxycontin, Oxycodone, that are very abused now and the regulators are really getting tough on the use of those medications. Look, I don't, I don't like writing for those prescriptions. I do. I'm very careful with how I do it. They can help some people. Right. But what I try to do is maximize the non-drug therapies as much yes. as I possibly can mm -hmm. so that we can rely less on the pills. On the pills. Right. So it gets you into really good physical therapy because there's good physical therapy and there's... Oof. Then there's bad. It's not it's so good physical therapy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean. Yes. So where were you born? Oh boy. <laughs> I was born in Virginia. But in Virginia. Yeah. And you grew up there? Yeah, I went to school north of Boston. I've lived all over the country. I went to undergrad in, uh, north of Boston and finished up out at UCLA, and I went to med school in Chicago. But most, most of my postgraduate training was done at Columbia University, and I was a uh, clinical professor in the medical school at Columbia University for 17 years. Wow. So and what brought you out to the Hamptons, the famous Hamptons? It seemed like everybody ends up in the Hamptons. <laughs> really? Well, most of my There guess. aren't so many people here right now. <laughs> <laughs> so. Well, I have a practice uh, on Madison Avenue in New York City. Even today? Oh, yeah. And uh, in Wainscott. Wainscott, that's I'm out here. I'm in the <clears throat> Wainscott Professional Building. Uh, right across the hall from Dr. Siska and Dr. White. I'm in with, in the great, with the great uh, dermatologist, Patrick Hennessy. We're in the same oh, space. Oh, the same space. Yes. Dr. White seems like is an establishment here. Oh, yes. Merritt, <laughs> Merritt White is, a, <laughs> yes. is an icon. Yeah. And his daughter practices there now. Really? And Lara Siska, who's the chief of uh, family medicine. Ah. Terrific doctor, all very good doctors. Wow, I remember when so. Dr. White was on uh, Lumber Lane. I used to take uh, somebody there, an old lady, to him. But anyway, let's get back at you. How did you get to the so, Hamptons? Well, I started coming out here in the summers, and, and uh, I have a little house in Springs, and so I, I, I yo-yo back and forth between my New York City practice and my Wainscott practice, trying to take care of all these people with Pain. bad necks and bad shoulders and bad knees and 
bad oh. backs, the, Gee, the I'm, painful I have pain, multitudes. But I was told to live with it, so I don't. <laughs> I don't take any medications. You and everybody else. Yeah. Well, no, actually, you know, you're probably smart. If the pain is not too bad, I often work, talk through that with patients yeah. and give them a program of self-care with exercise and stretches that they can do on their own. Sometimes go to the gym, go to the rec center, do some swimming, do some stretching do some yoga, very often they can avoid taking pills. T they can stay yeah. away from the damn doctors. Yeah. I'd like to keep people away from the doctors. I, I may have several doctoral degrees, but I'll tell you, I don't like doctors. <laughs> so you don't go to a doctor. I don't. I, <laughs> No, well, no. You're afraid I mean, of the doctor. I'm not afraid of the doctors. <laughs> but honestly, I would rather keep people out of the doctor's offices. That's the way I feel. And that's actually my goal for all my patients. And I'll tell them that up front. <clears throat> it's not that I don't like seeing you, but my goal for you is to get you out of my office. If you understand what I mean, I want to get you well enough so that you're yes. taking care of yourself and you're better. You're getting to the market. You're mm -hmm. getting to the bridge game. You're doing better. You're not having to take all these pills. Maybe mm -hmm. a, a an inject, little injection here, a little injection there. Get these things to quiet down. Make sure your diet is good. Did you know that a bad diet can really make your pain worse? I can imagine, yeah. If you're eating all the wrong foods, I you, can know. Get, you can get very inflamed and it can make your pain much worse. So it's true you are what you eat. And there's a lot of science. This isn't Home Shopping Channel or QVC stuff. This is real science. Yes, it's I Real know. science. I believe. So but it's I, difficult. It's difficult, particularly for people who are in pain. Yeah, because, you know, when you don't feel well, you eat something thinking it will make you feel better. <laughs> you go for comfort food. Yes. And sometimes the comfort food <laughs> makes you Ill. is just the thing <laughs> that, that winds up your nervous system and gives you yep. more pain. But uh, we have a lot of science now about what people really should be eating. So you have an office in Wayne Scott. In and Wayne in Scott. New York. And what days are you here in Wayne Scott? I'm here earlier in the week, and then I go into the city. I'm going later this afternoon into New York City. Oh, so and like I spend the second Wednesday half of the week in, in the city. In New York City. At yeah. my Madison Avenue. And practice. you take anybody who walks in or you take you have to have an appointment? Well, I don't usually take Al Qaeda. <laughs> What? I don't take criminals. If they're oh. carrying automatic weapons, I don't take them. Well. If they're terrorists, if they're on the terrorist watch list. How would you know? They're not going I'm to I'm teasing tell you, you, Jenny. Oh, you're teasing me. Oh, good. No, obviously, I take care of all, a lot of different people. I take care of plenty of younger people. No, no, problems, my question was. I take care of a lot of older people with Medicare. Because obviously, Medicare. a lot of the Medicare population, people over 65, have shoulder pain, neck pain, bad oh, knees. Yeah. They got bad yeah. backs. They got scoliosis. They got sciatica. Oh, they got scoliosis. My daughter had scoliosis when she was young. But do you need an appointment, or do yeah, you yeah, yeah. just do you take walk-ins? Uh, it's not a McDonald's. It's not a drive-through. You have to make an appointment. <laughs> you can't just walk in. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh well, that's what I wanted to know. <clears throat> because, like, if somebody walks along the street, oh, I got a pain. I have to want to see Dr. Dillard. No. And just walks Those in. Those people have to go to the emergency room. Oh, that's right. <laughs> For me, you have to make an appointment, appointment. like every mm -hmm. other doctor in the world. Oh, and what kind of hours do you keep? Early until late. So That's you one. Call 7 a.m.? Yeah, call me up. No, I don't work seven days a week. 7 a.m.? 
No. You said early. No. Who wants What's to work early? at 7 a.m.? You said early. 8.39. 8.39. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's yeah. early. Yeah. Sometimes I don't wake up till noon. Good for you. <laughs> I want your life. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm pretty lax lately. This is why you don't have very much pain. Well, I have some, but uh, I manage. I'm, it's not like it lasts. It goes away, if I'm careful. It goes away. It's, it's a big problem. It's a big problem. 13% of the American workforce is disabled by chronic pain. Yeah. 13%. And the two conditions that disable American workers, depending on what year you study this, is either headache or uh -huh. spine pain, yeah. back and neck pain. These are the two conditions that prevent Americans from, from being able to work. Well, I know because someone very dear to me had these terrible, terrible headaches. And he went to see you. And after, I can't imagine who you'd be talking about. And after a while, you, he told me how wonderful you could pinpoint where his pain was. He said no one ever did that, and how you weaned him of certain, you know, very strong drugs, and you put him on a lesser dosage of something else, and how it's working for him. I really have to say that. Because when he was not feeling well, I mean, it was terrible. Every week we had to run to the emergency room, and nobody was able to treat him. So. Yes, he's done. He's done very well, and uh, obviously we don't want to talk about who this is, but it's a family member of yours. Yes. But um, he's done very well, and uh, I've got him on a couple of very important nutritional supplements for somebody with this particular kind of headache. And I think we're, we're very gratified with, with Because he thought he was going to have to go through life with such terrible headaches. And there were times he would say to me, it's, uh, it's not worthwhile, that he doesn't want to live anymore. And thank God we found you. And I see that. This beautiful book here. Where can do we find this book? Amazon.com. Is it in any the book place that everybody no. Bookstores don't keep books for very long. They don't. <coughs> bookstores come out with a book. If it's a new book, it'll be on the shelf for a few weeks and then it's out. This is a few years old. Best place to get this uh, chronic pain solution is Amazon.com. BarnesandNoble.com, of course, but really the best bookseller and of course, is Amazon. We could say it's James N. Dillard, M-D-D-C-C-A-C. -C. What does that all mean? M-D, I know what it means. Right. <laughs> My darling. <laughs> <laughs> it means major deity. <laughs> <laughs> means major dummy. Major, major dummy. DC is a doctor of chiropractic. I was a chiropractor and acupuncturist before I went to med wow, school. Wow, I used to go to a chiropractor religiously in my younger years. It can certainly help crack people. Me. <laughs> did he crack you up? <laughs> yes, yes, he did. I had a good rapport with him. And uh, how long did it take you to write this book? About a year. About a year. Yeah, it was very well researched. We have some good chiropractors out here on the East End, and we have a lot of acupuncturists. I know some, yeah. And they can be helpful. They can be part of the pain team. Um, as, as an MD, as a fully trained um, academic MD, I will often bring in these other practitioners as needed, again, to try to decrease the reliance on the drugs and on the shots 
and on the surgery. Decrease the need for the stronger therapies, the more dangerous therapies. Well, for scoliosis, you need surgery. Depends on how bad it is. There's a lot that can be done. Look, I'll tell you, I think having a good physical therapist, a good chiropractor, a good acupuncturist can really make a difference for a lot of these pain conditions. And so for me, as a pain specialist, as a medical pain specialist, mm -hmm. I like to weave together these other therapeutic approaches mm -hmm. as best I can so I'm not having to I'm not having to write for huge amounts of oxycontin and morphine and dilaudid and but sometimes all that you stuff. feel it's necessary oh yeah no it definitely some people do need those medicines but I like being very careful. Well, yeah, I know all the doctors are very careful. Mention those, <laughs> you know, they, they're afraid their license will be taken away. Most of the doctors who I talk to out yeah. here, they, they are afraid even to prescribe too many ambients. Right. Well, there's a lot of, there's a lot of oversight now the Drug Enforcement Administration, the DEA, the FBI, they're watching us like a hawk. Yeah, they should be watching people who have pain some more. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have them come in and try to yeah. do my job. <laughs> yes. Right. It's, it's just easier to... Well, they're looking at the, the bad side, so we're the few that are cheating your bed, the people who really have pain, they are suffering for it. And look, there is, there is illegal diversion. Any, yeah. any doctor oh. who is given the privilege <clears throat> of having one of these prescription pads, every single one of us has to be aware that there is illegal diversion. Any one of us who thinks that we have not been fooled by a patient, oh. who thinks that we have not been fooled by a patient coming in to try to get medication out of us, oh, that's never happened to me. Any doctor who thinks that is an idiot. Yeah, I mean, even, I mean, they are just, uh, as I said, they overly uh, afraid. We all have to be careful, Judy. We all have yeah. to be careful. And, we and can you detect, uh, <coughs> a, how long does it take for you, for the patient to detect if they are fooling you? Well, I had good training. Um, I think I can often tell, and I rely on the state database in Albany, and, but it's still hard. It there's, is hard. There's a lot of pressure. And people who are aware of this, if you, if you ask law enforcement, if you ask the police officers here on the east end of Long Island, they will tell you that there is a big problem out here. There, oh, no. there is plenty of narcotic diversion. There are lots of these pain pills being sold. From but there's a lot of money out here. There's I mean, money and there's, <clears throat> look, we have, we have problem with alcohol, we have problem with drugs, we have problem with domestic violence. Yes. There are, there are plenty yep. of social problems that we have out here. And each one of us, as citizens and as doctors, we have a social responsibility now. I have a responsibility to treat pain patients as best I can, and mm -hmm. I will do that. But I also have a legal responsibility to try to make sure that no prescription of mine is being sold on the street. Right. That's not easy. That's oh, not I easy. see what you mean. That you, you feel that the people sell the, those drugs. Well, for 
for money, yeah. Well, look, it's human, yeah. it's human nature. It's human nature. I just try to do the best job that I can with yeah. each patient who's in front of me. Right. Um, to try to get them back to their life. That's, to get them yeah, back exactly. to... Yeah, exactly, the back to their life. For me, it's about getting that individual who's in my office... To back to normal life. Back to their life. Yes. Get them back to the grocery store, get them back to work, yeah. get them to the bridge game, get them to the right. gym, get them back into their life, get them back with their spouse functioning, with their kids mm -hmm. functioning. That's what it's about. That's all well, it's that's about. Well, that's a good goal. That's yeah. what it, so you must be very busy. The phone well, must be ringing and ringing and ringing. The bells are ringing. I can always be busier. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is the winter. This is my slow season. Really? Yeah. Well, because most people leave the Hamptons, they go. Everybody's in Florida. Yes. <laughs> the pain doctors in Florida are getting yeah. killed right now. <laughs> what about in the city? I'm busy in the city. You're busy in the city, yeah. yeah. Well, Always. so you say you take Medicare. Medicare and United Healthcare and the government program NYSHIP, N Y S H I P. What is that? That's what all the teachers and police officers have out here. Oh. Um, N Y S H I P, New York State Health Insurance Program. Okay, so we're talking with Dr. James Dillard whose office is in Wainscott. You could look him up in the phone book, and he has a website, and he wrote this wonderful book, and a pleasure having you here. And uh, maybe you'll come back. Thank you. Please. And you look lovely. Oh, thank you. You're very you. red. And you are very handsome, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> and have your patients fall in love with you? Oh, my God, please. <laughs> And that's another story, right? I only want them to get better. <laughs> okay, well, uh, I could give out your cards. And where I live, there's plenty of old ladies there. And now we have a lot of more gentlemen since you take Medicare. But you don't take Medicaid, do you? I don't take Medicaid, unfortunately. Medicare, yes. Okay.